where's the tour taking you so far? So this tour is really taking us all over the world. It's, I started off in Europe and uh, playing in Perth tonight to kick off the Australian tour. Before we're done, we will be visiting Sydney and Melbourne, uh, Adelaide, uh, definitely covering a lot of ground. Yeah, excellent. I, I saw by chance that you ended up playing soccer with Amanda Palmer in Belgium the other night. How did that yes. come about? Well, so we were playing uh, at a venue that was very close by within a, a complex of several different uh, venues, and she was playing at the same time. We heard via social media that she was playing, and our fans started basically talking to each other, saying, oh, my God, how, you know. Yeah. And we'd, um, we'd connected through a mutual friend, Ben Folds, um, years ago. Yeah. And so we, we just finished our show, ran over, got to see her, and yeah. before you know it, here we are playing soccer with Amanda Palmer in Belgium yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and talking about it in Australia. Yeah, I mean, our, our lives are strange like that, I guess. I mean, the, the, one of the great things about touring is, you know, the surprises, the unexpected experiences, whether mm. it's, um, you know, visiting a you know, yeah. uh, city for the first time or, you know, seeing a crowd that's, you know, yeah. especially amazing or seeing, you know, people that you respect like Amanda. Yeah, it was pretty rad. I mean, she's she's very cool and very, very talented and, mm. and also has kind of done things her own way for a very long time. And, you know, as as a band who um, has run, uh, you know, a record company for the last, gosh, you know, 12, 13 years, something like that, mm. you can definitely um, appreciate and respect that e- even more. And, and I just love her completely independent you know headspace she just she she just does what she wants the way she wants and and we kind of feel very similar we just as soon do it that way too well as you <laughs> as you mentioned though that you guys you guys have sort of ran independently you have your own record label for all that time sure. so you know is is her general ethos and it's no surprise to me that her fans and your community of fans started picking up on this before you three did you know yeah yeah i mean there's there's a there's a lot of respect um mutual respect for uh, between artists that have sort of tried to forge a different path, and you know, we have we've had an amazing group of people that have helped support us, you know, maintaining independence, and um, and one of those large group is the fans themselves, you know, and yeah. you know, when we first started the label on our third record, you know, there were so many unknowns, but mm. one thing we did know was that we had that direct connection with the fans through um, yeah. an online presence and a strong you know, community online. And, um, you know, being able to come back year after year and and tour is really, in large part, credit to that direct connection. Yeah, and I mean, the Australian fans play a huge part in that. I mean, we've we've toured more um, as an independent act here in Australia than we ever did uh, on those first couple records uh, Mm. that we were on a major. I mean, we've done way more shows and had way more opportunities to kind of connect with people and so on. And it's and it's in no small part because. Uh, you know things like social media before there was such a thing, uh, you know, just on the internet as a whole. So it's 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 pretty fantastic to be, you know, an independent band in 2017. Well, I mean, when you guys came out for the 2012 tour, it was the first time you'd been out in a little while, and I do remember yeah. you saying, you know, we'll come back if you come back. Is it that kind of sure. turnout that encourages you and uh, you know makes it financially viable to do that kind of touring? Well, it, it, I wouldn't even say that too. It's just, it's just. I mean, obviously, the <laughs> turnout matters. Yeah. Uh, well. But um, I think we like to be very upfront with our fans about mm. that. It's, it's that it's a two way street. You know, I think um, some artists uh, maybe you forget. Right. This, this happens not as a. It's, it's not something I own. It's not something I, I get to have the corner on the market of. Mm. Like, th- this is a choice people are making. Thousands of people are making the choice to put me in this position. And if I don't, uh, you know, live up to their needs, to their, uh, you know, what they're looking for, then it'll go yeah. away. Well, and also if I don't acknowledge the fact that I need their support and need um, them to be there next time we come through, right? It's, it's, it, it, is, it is that two-way street in that way. And acknowledging it, you know, we, we say that because we feel like it's important for Uh, for people to know that we appreciate the fact that they're there and we want them to come back. And so that acknowledgement of saying, hey, guys, here's how this works. If you will come back, we can come back. So please, you know, join us next time. We hope you had a great time. I think that that is is more important now than it has ever been because technology is making it easier and easier to be a passive music fan, right? And streaming services and, and, you know, radio plays, just they don't really 
pay the bills the way they might have for a lot of people 20, 20 years, years ago, ago yeah. right? And and so it's important to say to fans, look, our relationship is important, our physical relationship. The fact that you bought a T-shirt or you actually bought an album rather than just streaming it or that you bought a ticket or you made the effort to show up early in the morning at a radio station we were at and wanted to say hello and get an autograph, those things become more important now than they've ever been because it's the difference between uh, you know us getting to do this at a as a job and us getting to this as a, a second hobby. job. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know? uh, and so, um, you know, that's that's important. Speaking of that kind of fan support, obviously you can't make it everywhere, but what do you think of the Bring Hanson to Newcastle campaign that's been going on? <laughs> <laughs> I really want that to come to fruition. <laughs> yes, we, exactly. we need to, we need to uh, get the campaign in the uh, ears and uh, in front of more promoters so we can uh, make, make that an, an event that's possible. I mean, yeah. uh, again, I mean, our... Our journey over the last, like we said, many years is hugely connected to the fans that have um, actually been listening and mm. actually have r- truly like dug deep. And, and so uh, huge credit to the fan community and to those in Newcastle that were trying to make noise and bring us to Newcastle. Let's, let's hope that on the next yeah. tour that can happen. Yeah. I, I absolutely loved their commitment to this campaign. It was fantastic. <laughs> I would say this. So this year, this this whole tour, right? This is the Middle Everywhere tour, and we're celebrating 25 years of being a band. It's been 20 years since Middle of Nowhere and Umbop came out. And this is a moment where we're, you know, it's not that you don't always uh, have the past as a part of your current story, but really making an effort to say, look, let's talk about the history a little bit because it's important, important to encapsulate where we've been, you know, because we are meeting new people along the way. And there are people who have come in and out of this story. And so let's let's talk about where we've been so that we can talk about where we're going. And where are we going, right? Uh, we're already planning tours for next year. We're always planning, uh, planning for the next album. And so there will be uh, a place for Newcastle soon. I'll put my name down on that list right now of uh, requesting. <laughs> I'm sure some help from the local station will definitely help push that message. Absolutely. Exactly. I Was Born is the new single. It's got a really cool built-up acoustic vibe, uh, sort of um, in difference to the almost very tight funk rock style of the last record. Have you started writing for the next project, or is that standalone for the greatest hits? Well, it it is in some form or another standalone for the greatest hits in the sense that, you know, it's actually a song that's a few years old um, that was not originally written uh, with a Hanson record in mind. But uh, when when the song was written, it, it, it really stood out as something that we felt like was a really great message to 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 put out and it became a question of okay when is this song going to be released and it made a lot of sense in conjunction with this anniversary tour because in so many ways this song is really coming from a place of where we have been and looking forward to where we're going you know because it's talking about you know getting out there and living your dreams and doing the things that you know might seem a little bit crazy or a little bit uh, unusual and not being afraid to kind of embrace that and uh, in a lot of ways it also kind of addresses the kind of more optimistic maybe even youthful perspective uh, that some might have and saying you know what the, the the future can be bright, and I gotta and I gotta go go out there and, and seize the day. And we feel like that's a great way to start uh, the next chapter of of our musical career and, and musical you know journey. I mean, we're always writing for the next record. I think is is the short answer, right? The 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 future, what comes next, is is why we keep being a band. We we wouldn't be uh, here today if it was just about the past. I mean, we would have all. I think gone on, but it's, it's sort of this desire to write more songs, desire to share more experiences. Uh, and truthfully, I think music is medication for us. And so we get through our lives by writing songs that, that help us through it. And, uh, and so we continue. Well, look, I, I noticed that, you know, you obviously have the fan club EPs coming out every year, but you also had the rock and roll EP cover EP come out last mm-hmm. year, by the way, I believe in a thing called love cover, just perfection. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Having your own studio complex with the label and everything, sure. does it sort of free you up to play around a bit more and do things you might not do with the pressure of studio time? Yeah, having your own studio is a really key thing. I mean, we started, you know, had our own space, I think, before it was as common as it is now because, mm. you know, now you can record on a laptop and it actually sounds pretty great. Um, but 
absolutely being independent, having a rec- recording studio yeah. is is really key to the ability to constantly be in a state of creation. And I, what you were referencing, the fan club community, I mean, we have been creating almost a second career of music for the fan club now for, you know, over a decade. Mm. And that that's an important part of the story because yeah. no matter what's going on, there's always um, a way to connect with a, those, those devout fans and those that have followed us. And so um, it's important to us to always yeah. have a stream of a creative outlet and to be able to continue to focus on being creative all the time. That's yeah. that I think in more and more is the future of um, being an artist and not just a musical artist, mm. but any kind of creative brand because people are, you know, thrown so many different things all the time that it's not simply about, Hey, here's 12 songs and I hope you like it. It's about yeah. having a connection with the artist yeah. and, and um, it being constant and being more consistent. I mean, one of the, one of the things that I think is super important about what we've been able to do over the last, you know, particularly 13 or so years as an indie band it is directly that connection of what what the fan community means specifically on the kind of membership side of things because it allows for us to to make music that is specifically for uh, a limited group of people and and for us to kind of have a a backbone, shall we say, uh, a backbone of connection with those fans and to give them things that are special and unique that no one else can get and really try and maintain that special unique relationship because otherwise you know it it, it, it separates I, I guess it's shall we say it separates the uh the girls from the <laughs> from the ladies if you know what i mean the <laughs> yeah. men from the boys yeah well, i i see it more more this way uh you know in a microsoft world you know open source everything trying to get to as many people as possible we've chosen to be you know apple right and say we're going to have our little <laughs> store and we're going to have our our way of thinking and we're for those who want more who want something deeper uh, there's a lot here but we're not going to uh, sort of try and be everything to everyone. Mm. One of the things on top of that you guys also do work on on the side is the uh, brewery. When can I import mm-hmm. some to Australia? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that's a great question. So we started making beer um, and putting out our own beer in 2013 with uh, Hanson Brothers Beer Company. And it's pretty exciting because it is actually something that's growing all over the world. Mm. I mean, in the U.S., it's thriving, and, and here in Australia, actually, you guys have amazing microbrews. Yeah, we've um, got a we've got a couple of brew pubs just down the road that have opened up. Yeah. and they're brilliant. They serve only in-house made stuff. Yeah, yeah it's, exactly. So the the short answer is um, is that we are focused on the U.S. right now because yeah. you know local regional beer is really kind of what it's about. Um, we do want to have, you know, we'd love to see Hanson Brothers beer all over the world. And and so I think, you know, one of the things that we've seen in our music that has taught us something as we've tried to build the beer deal is it's, you know, authenticity and having a great story is that's so much a part of, you know, what you're doing in the first place. And the product itself, of course, has to be great. Um, that's the same way we're approaching the beer is the story of it of it um, coming from somewhere and the authenticity of that beer and the quality, those are the things that matter. So we're kind of building it authentically. And one of the things, you know, for fans around the world, one of the things we have done is we, we created a beer and music festival that's in Oklahoma that once a year is kind of a chance for people to make the, the Mecca trek, you know, to come and experience sort of our corner of the world. And we invite many breweries from all over the U.S. and around the world to come. So if someone's like, man, I'm really curious, maybe make, make a little, uh, you know, adventure into the U.S., uh, if you if you haven't gotten it yet, it's <laughs> third week of, of May. Yeah. It's a reason to sort yeah. of experience that the American beer culture. Yeah, everybody for needs a to weekend. take a you know a holiday to see the South and the United States, right? Yeah, just, just one time. Stop yeah. in Oklahoma in May. Exactly. The craft beer is a great incentive as well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> we think so. Do you guys run multiple brews or just the mops? Yeah, multiple styles. Mops is sort of the flagship mm. beer that we put out. It's first. A great name, of course. Um, <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> and we have a. Uh, it's a pale. We have four beers right now. We have. Um, an imperial stout uh, called Tulsa Tea. We have an amber called Red Ale, uh, Red Land. We have um, a festive ale. Uh, is, is what it's called. That's uh, it's branded with our actual festival, uh, which is a saison. And then we have Um Hops, which is the pale ale. 
I also love that you know what you're talking about and you're hands on. That makes me so happy. Uh, yeah, yeah, you have to, yeah. <laughs> to avoid this becoming completely about beer, uh, which I could easily, happily talk with you all day about. <laughs> sure. Um, <laughs> Especially if we all had a pint in our hands. Yes, that oh. would be amazing. Uh, the film clip to I Was Born, is of course, all of your children. Was it a fun record or was it a stressful day as dads? Uh, it was uh, so the the new video has you know all these different faces young very very young people babies down to uh, up to <laughs> ten or twelve and then us in it as well and yes we, they're all of our children and the the day actually was really great I mean all I the, I expected it to be more stressful <laughs> um, yeah but it, it was, was surprisingly good. Good. so we we originally wrote the idea for the the video not really thinking about our kids uh, ever since the song was written it seemed like there was a a beauty to it almost a childlike perspective on sort of what you were meant to do and and the, the fearlessness of saying I was born to be something extraordinary or do something extraordinary and so we always wanted to have kids and then. Uh, as we started talking about the video, it sort of became apparent that the the coolest image, I think, to see was not just generic uh, faces of young and old and black and white, but almost to see us uh, through our children. And, and we started, you know, when I was six years old. So seeing my six-year-old girl, you know, running around in these outfits and things that were hers and uh, seeing our kids playing instruments, like it, it kind of represented us over the last 25 years in a yeah. way that only our kids could. Um, and it's also, yeah, it becomes very, it, it's actually us sharing a little bit of our story and, you know, also the kids already knew the song. So, you know, that was easy. <laughs> <laughs> they were like, sweet, I can be in a video. Yeah. Awesome. It, was ama- it was really amazing to watch um, each of them and their personalities come through. And um, I think yeah. that was really cool to watch because they, they were all, you know, in their own way uh, playing out the roles that were most comfortable to them, whether it was the costume they chose to put on or whether it was they were singing or dancing. And it, it, was, uh, it was a really fun shoot. Will you be pleased to know, like, usually if my wife sees a film clip before I do of a band I like, she'll be like, hey, look at this, you know, you like this band. But she actually sent me the link going, oh, my God, this is awesome. You have to watch this video. <laughs> and so I thought, well, it must be good, you know, regardless of who it is. Yeah, that's we like to hear that. Well, yeah, we, we hope that uh, it has that kind of effect. I think the, the beauty to me of, of the video is it is sort of shamelessly optimistic and, um, you know, it, it's aspirational and uh, hopefully people see themselves in that, mm. not just sort of us and our kids. But uh, it's it's not really to say that we're all going to be Albert Einstein, but <laughs> um, simply to say that we should think of our lives in that way. Yeah. And a, a little less fear uh, and a little more risk would probably uh, serve all of us in the long run because we'd be happier for the things that we tried and failed at. Uh, because we'd succeed at more things if we tried uh, and and risked a little more. I mean, our whole life story as a band, I think, has been about, um, in a way, accepting that we were going to be a little different than our peers, Mm. right, than the other kids that we were growing up with in Oklahoma in our neighborhood, uh, and then getting on with it, right, being okay with it. Uh, and and so you know maybe in whatever little bit of wisdom we can uh, pass on, like if it, if there is any, you know that's that's our story. Speaking of passing on wisdom, the fact you guys do have uh, kids of various ages. My first one is due in two months, and I'm crowdsourcing. Congratulations! <laughs> Thank yeah, you. Congrats. Crowdsourcing advice it's all from over. everybody. I mean... <laughs> what's what's your advice for me? Because at the moment, oh, gosh. everything is new and amazing, and he's not even born yet. Yeah. Uh, wow. I mean, having kids, it's very dangerous to give out advice because uh, your experience, <laughs> sure. your experiences will be different. Everybody's, is, but um, I mean, the one thing that is very clearly true is that you're. I mean, you were you born with the skills to be a parent in most most cases. Mm. A lot of people walk in with this crazy like I've got to make everything perfect, and pretty much you just need to throw that out because uh, <laughs> it's not going to be perfect. But that. You know the the thing that we got from our parents that I think is probably one of the greatest gifts is we we were given a sense of confidence because we were surrounded by uh, somebody that that felt like we were important mm. and I think that's the best. I mean, as a parent, all you can really do is is try and instill that sense of hey, you're actually important to me because I'm going to mess up doing other stuff. You know, as a you're going to you know drop the pacifier in a dirty you know you know 
park yeah. and ask yourself whether I should give it back to the you know to the one year old because they won't stop crying. Yeah. And they were like, well, you know, are they going to get a disease or should I? I mean, there's a million or is it situations. Probiotics? You know, <laughs> so um, parenting is not about perfection. It's about it's about kind of making yourself. Uh, the biggest fan of another person. Well, I think the biggest thing about, and I don't know, my, my personal experience is um, it's it's less hard on the kids and it's more hard on you. Yeah, right? yeah, you, exactly. you have to come to like the understanding that your life has changed forever. Right. <laughs> and it's not, it's not worse. It's not better. It's just different, different. right? Your relationship yeah. with this thing this kid this your <laughs> child your yeah. you know so just much just don't of your call life. it a thing though well, I, I, I just call it like like thing yeah well it's, sometimes they feel like things like when they first come into the world thing, you're like oh my god thing number this one. thing oh uh, but uh but it's i think the the thing that that takes time is accepting like that your life has changed and mm. learning how to enjoy the new experience you're having yeah. because i think the the place where we struggle is is when we go like okay now i'm going to go out for drinks like i always go out oh well <laughs> it's not quite like that anymore or now i'm going to go out with my same friends right who don't have any kids or whatever. well they don't share the experiences i'm going through it might be hard for me for them to like you kind of you've got to You've got to accept, like, okay, life, this is a whole new world. I'm going to college now. You mm. know, college is not high school. Now mm. I'm, like, now I have a baby, and, like, there's a whole new set of experiences. So Zach's saying give up on your life before. <laughs> oh, he's <laughs> Start. What's the difference friends? between a wedding and a funeral? <laughs> One is a ceremony <laughs> signifying the end of your life, and the other, you're dead. <laughs> wow. That's wow. what you're saying, right? That's no. Cool. Is that kind of like kids? No, what I'm saying <laughs> is acceptance is is the point when you begin to enjoy being a parent, when oh. you realize oh, that sorry. you're not in control of your child and their needs, and you're simply there to enjoy the process yes, and, yeah. and serve them along the way. <laughs> and and when we still t- when we try and stuff our kids into our life as we'd like mm. to see it, then mm. we fail inevitably because uh, if your kids teach you one thing, uh, it's service because you're in service <laughs> yeah. to them. Yeah. <laughs> like servant. Yeah. See, no, I, I thought that they were in service to me, like indentured servants. Yeah. No, that doesn't <laughs> happen until they're in their like teens. You've you've gotten plenty of Hanson advice now on your child. Yeah, exactly. I, I love it. Give and look, advice. after that, I'm still very very excited. So that's good. <laughs> that's good. Yes. That's good. Thank goodness. Um, lastly, you're playing in Sydney, closest to us next week. Uh, the Wednesday show is sold out, but the Thursday show is still on sale. There's a couple of tickets left. Yeah. Considering that this uh, show is the closest to the greatest hits coming out, will it be sort of a wide breadth of everything? So yeah. the show really does cover um, as much of six albums, and you know. 25 years as we could put into a show. Mm. Um, yeah. We change it up a little bit, but we definitely have a really cool arc of music that if you come to this show, whether it's your first or your 50th, um, it's it really does connect you to a lot of music that's you know been put out. And um, I mean, like what we talk about with a concert is part of our job is really to take you away for that you know hour or two hours. And, you know, everybody's got job, work, life, you know, things that are hanging over them. But mm. the music and the experience for that couple hours, it's, it's, you know, a journey. So it definitely covers the gamut of Hanson music from the beginning till till now. Excellent. Thank you, guys. The single's out now. Tour's next week. And the Greatest Hits album coming out later in the year? Yeah. That's right. Perfect. Thank you so much for coming in, guys. Thank you. And nice. thanks, thanks for, for the having advice us as well. Absolutely. <laughs> Anytime you want some bad advice, you just call yeah, us. You just write that down. Thing no worries. One, thing two, thing three, <laughs> thing four. <laughs>